Well, just to frame this, um, we've been talking about the disease industrial complex, and we've been talking about what uh, Tom has said is the plan execute framework. We have not talked about the search amplify. And what I want to talk about is that part of healthcare or health or non medical defined health, which is the search amplify. And it's not where the money is. But it, it is also not where information systems have been. And I think that's a great tragedy. Into the complexity that we've been talking about all day, and this, as Tom says, two million terms in the medical lexicon, 15,000 categories in the ICD-10, legislation is now introducing performance penalties to hospitals, taking readmission rates as the source of cost reduction and an indicator of poor risk management. And in doing so, they're inter introducing into this same system a totally new, well, not new, but a totally different worldview. So, one in five Medicare patients is readmitted to the hospital within 30 days of discharge. That costs approximately in the US 17.5 billion. So, three of the measures that are being introduced and are now in legislation to reduce the readmissions illuminate these two worldviews. The first is, number one, provide clinical and emotional interventions that lower the risk of readmission. Number two, provision of critical information to patient care coordinators. And number three, provide a monitor for the effectiveness of clinical interventions. So, there's been almost no research into emotional interventions that lower the risk of readmission. Nobody really knows that. Yet providers within the hospital are to be judged on such interventions. How are they going to know what to do? Then who is a patient care coordinator? That's a totally newly recognized role. And how that role is defined and how the information gathered by such coordinator outside the hospital system, because after discharge, the patient is outside the system, will illuminate the hospital clinical team. Where, for instance, is the feedback loop from what takes place outside the hospital system? And third, effectiveness of clinical interventions has had little attention, if any, paid to it. We all know the story. The surgery was successful, the patient died. <laughs> How is the provider within the enterprise to know what constitutes effectiveness outside the enterprise? This is the huge issue of health and vitality and function for the patient versus medical success and medical measures and medical data. So the two worldviews go back in tradition completely to the barber surgeon versus the wise woman and the medical uh, advisor or family members, the barber surgeon was to fix someone or something. The family or the medicine man or the uh, wise women were to restore function and contribution. It's a challenge to our hospital-based systems to recognize that healing does not place, take place in the hospital. It takes outside of the hospital and that vitality is not a matter of medical data. Mm. So both the what happens outside the hospital system in terms of discharge after treatment and what keeps a person from having to be admitted is not part of the data system that we have invested our dollars in. We've already heard from you, Tom, about Uwe Reinhardt and the fee-for-service um, economics analysis of healthcare. Uwe Reinhardt said transactions in this market are maintained by regulatory standards, the fairness of transactions in the market. Well, a, the worldview of transactions in the market is um, illustrate why performance measures 
that I've just described introduce a new worldview. And while the OO's performance measures are doomed to fail unless we change things. Although fee for service payment has reinforced the illusion that there is a transaction based system, as soon as we look at either outcomes or effectiveness, we're in the world of interaction, not transaction, and we're no longer within the framework of the enterprise. We're talking about informatics and our capacity to use informatics to deal with change. But what has changed and what is changing is not human medical need. It's the enterprise uh, and the delivery of medical care, not health. We now know almost all of the causes of lifestyle-related and chronic conditions. Longevity has been stable pretty well for decades. And the social determinants of health are still every bit as unexplored as they've ever been. What is changing is the application of information and information gathering tools to the performance within the enterprise. However our sophisticated our current knowledge of genomics, Christoph, may seem, there's little evidence yet as to how that knowledge can, will, or should influence the behavior and the choices uh, about living and vitality by ordinary individuals. Most of us don't know why the medical industry is incapable of either communication or caring, and most of us resent the plethora of information regarding medicine seems to subsume both well-being and function into, as some aspect of consumerism. So that's illustrative that our expectations also come from different worldviews. When we're admitted to a medical facility, we expect care. If we're very lucky these days, a nurse or someone else, in my case it was a maintenance man in the emergency room, will help us to feel that care. But they are no longer assigned to care. This is a, one of the reasons we're losing so many nurses. They are assigned to gather data. And their performance is measured in terms of data collected on behalf of the enterprise and not on their impact on the patient. It has become dangerous to the patient to be admitted to a hospital without their own patient advocate to accompany them 24 hours a day because the providers within the institution are frequently distracted by the demands of data collection. Further, the plan execute model that Tom has so well described presumes both complete knowledge and control of variability within the system and neither of those is possible in pursuit of either health or true care. Decision making within the medical enterprise is supposedly data driven, which means that an individual be, will be told, we have to see how you fit in our data before decisions are made. And many young doctors are saying that their judgment is no longer valuable and they are not being taught how to judge in a clinical setting, they're being taught how to look at data. How to what? Look at data. Okay, yeah. It seems to me that the successful software architecture, such as Tom's, began with observation of function and behavior, and then attempted to design an application of the tools to facilitate or enhance that function and those behaviors. Looking at the introduction of tablet technology, it's easy to see that it's a tool in search of an application. If we view informatics as a toolbox of applications already designed, we ignore the scientific step of observation. And I think this is absolutely essential to the current change that we need to make in medicine. If we design measures of performance from one wor worldview and expect to apply them to other expectations and systems without observation, we add to failure and frustration. Now this is the framework of all of these comments. All of us, in aggregate, spend less than one half of one percent of our lifetime, at the time of our lives, in a medical institution. So all of our effort on those transactions ignore the interactions of the other 99.5, 99.95% of the way we live our lives in health. Yeah, 
the desirable use of information tools to gather the lessons learned from experience is largely unexplored. And this is where what Werner was saying about the ability to contribute to the solution and what you were saying about amateurism is so important. We have not used our tools to archive what people know once they're discharged from hospital. We have not used it to archive what people know about high health or vitality. And we have not aggregated the knowledge in order to teach observational skills or to teach our providers to be more involved in the rest of our lives. I don't see why the tools couldn't be used differently. I think they can, they're just tools. And I think we have to pursue the transformation of information system into eventually knowledge systems and hopefully wisdom. That's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finished with you here. <laughs>